Washington looking in to Melchione. He has it. Fourth one from 60 feet away. No good. That's it. The Pacers win. The Indiana Pacers are the ABA champions. Congratulations to them. The big thing that I can say today is we walked down the tunnel five times in eight years to play for the whole ball of wax. And the relationship that we had, the togetherness we had, uh, going down the chute like we did that many times and the pressure that was on us, uh, I don't see that existing on very many ball clubs. Uh, I think we have something that's everlasting and very few people um, will ever have in their life. We have three championship rings. I emphasize the fun because that's what Indiana Pacer basketball and ABA basketball was at that time. It was fun business. The two leagues merged. The guys from the ABA were so exciting that they made the older guys in the NBA either you become exciting like we are or you're going to have to get out of the game we're going to push you right out of the game I don't think there is a, there'll ever be a team like we had uh, I'm not being egotistical or anything I just don't think there'll ever be a team like we had in the three, for first three or four years in those championship seasons it's just I've been on a lot of teams I've seen them and I don't think you'll never see, see that animal again we were a very unusual a very different team more than two decades ago the Indiana Pacers beat the Kentucky Colonels for their first victory ever as a professional basketball organization hello I'm Rick Maltra I used to cover the Colonels and the Pacers in the sporting news for Jim O'Brien when he had a column about the American Basketball Association. That was several years ago and more than I care to remember. Today though we are going to go back to those old ABA days when the Indiana Pacers generated excitement in a league that forever left its mark on professional basketball and when the Indiana Pacers carved a niche into a bit of Hoosier history. Let's look back at the ABA as it began in 1967 with its 11 newly formed teams. There was the Minnesota Muskies, who later became the Miami Floridians. The Oakland Oaks became the Washington Caps, and later were known as the Virginia Squires. The Houston Mavericks moved and became the Carolina Cougars, and later the Spirits of St. Louis. The Denver Rockets changed their name to the Denver Nuggets. And of course, there was the Kentucky Colonels, the New Jersey Americans later became the New York Nets. The Pittsburgh Pipers moved to Minnesota for a year and went back to Pittsburgh to become the Pittsburgh Condors. The New Orleans Buccaneers moved to Memphis becoming the Memphis Pros, then the Memphis Tams, and finally the Memphis Sounds. The Dallas Chaparrales moved to San Antonio and became the San Antonio Spurs. The Anaheim Amigos became the Los Angeles Stars, then the Utah Stars. And of course then we come to the Indiana Pacers. On March 5, 1967, a group of Indianapolis businessmen purchased a franchise in the newly formed American Basketball Association. Indiana Professional Sports Incorporated was formed to own and operate the new franchise and on June 8, 1967 the team was named the Indiana Pacers by General Manager Mike Storing because the organization intended to set the pace in professional basketball. Larry Staverman, an assistant at Notre Dame, was chosen as the first coach. Jimmy Walker of Providence College was the Pacers first draft pick while Roger Brown was the initial player ever signed by the club. 
Assisted by Bobby Leonard and Clyde Lavalette, Coach Staverman held tryouts during the week of June 19, 1967. During the camp, they looked at over 50 prospects and had over 15,000 fans view the evening workouts that were open to the public. The Pacers played their first game against the Kentucky Colonels on October 14, 1967, and they defeated the Colonels 117-95 in front of an overflowing crowd at the Fairgrounds Coliseum where hundreds of fans were turned away because the building was filled past capacity. Indiana finished the season with a 38 and 40 record and was eliminated in the playoffs by Pittsburgh in three straight. Pittsburgh went on to win the inaugural ABA championship. Despite the sub 500 record, Indiana fans showed their enthusiasm for the new club and the Pacers led the ABA in attendance averaging almost 5,000 fans per game. The 1969 season was only nine games old when Bobby Leonard was named to replace Staverman as coach of the Pacers. That season, Indiana won the Eastern Division and made it to the ABA Championship. Bob Leonard took the ABA Pacers to three championships during his tenure. The Pacers won the ABA title in the 69-70 season, defeating the Los Angeles Stars four games to two. In the 71-72 season, the Pacers knocked off the New York Nets four games to two for the title. And in the following season, the Kentucky Colonels took the Pacers to seven games before Indiana won its third ABA championship. Under Slick's leadership, the Indiana Pacers were the team to be feared by the rest of the league. The fiery Bobby Leonard was a motivator and a father figure as well to his ball clubs. This is a rarity in the professional basketball of today, but a formula that served Leonard well for eight ABA and four NBA seasons with the Indiana Pacers. It was easy to motivate because I could get them so mad at me that they would take it out on the other ball club. But uh, we were very close. We played hard and they worked hard on the court. They had a lot of success. We were together off the court. Now that's frowned on uh, in a lot of circles today that the players and coaches, there should be an aloofness uh, between coaches and players. I totally disagree with that theory. And the proof was we won uh, championships doing it the other way. Roger Brown spent eight seasons in a Pacer uniform. He is the original Pacer, being the first to sign with the organization. When people speak of Roger Brown, they remember a player with some of the greatest one-on-one -on -one moves they had ever seen the player you gave the ball to when the game was on the line. History seems to have left Roger Brown behind when you talk about the all-time greats to have played the game. But his teammates, coaches, and players he went against know better. Not only was he one of the Pacers' finest, but one of basketball's finest. His uniform jersey number, 35, is retired. time to, to do something I just went out and did it or, tr or attempted to do it and, and most of the time it it, uh, it worked and it was sometimes when it was there was failure uh, very few uh, but uh, I would uh, categorize myself as being a, a quiet leader and, and basically with, with the teams that that I was on from from 67 up until the time I retired uh, which was in 75, just about everybody was a quiet leader because we knew what we had to do, we knew when we had to do it, and we just went out and did it. Uh, and if we needed any motivation, uh, Slick definitely motivated us. Mel Daniels, alias Slim, played six seasons with the Pacers twice named the ABA's MVP in 1969 and 1971. He is Indiana's all-time leading rebounder, and he was selected four times on the All-ABA team. 
At six foot nine, Daniels was small by today's standards for a center, but in his prime, many ranked Daniels in the upper echelon of centers for that era. That included Wilt Chamberlain, Artis Gilmore, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Mel's jersey number, 34, is retired. To me, I was a hard-working guy. I hated to lose. I took losing uh, a heck of a lot tougher than most guys did. I mean, I, I threw things, I went temper tantrums, uh, um, because I felt that when we lost the game, it took away that whole week, that time, the preparation time was was depleted by somebody. They, they stole from me. Uh, my contribution, I felt that if I could score uh, 17 plus points a game, get 14 plus rebounds a game, uh, block some shots, play adequate uh, defense off the ball, help my teammates do some, you know, pass. Uh, I, I, I thought I would, I would, doing my job as far as the center was concerned. George McGinnis, 6'8", 235 pounds out of Indiana University, played seven seasons with the Pacers. He was co-ABA Most Valuable Player in 1975 along with Dr. J. Julius Irving. McGinnis was the prototype in mobile big men to have an impact on the game. Moses Malone, formerly of the ABA, and Charles Barkley would follow in that regard. A holder of numerous Pacer records, George McGinnis is one of three Indiana Pacers to have his jersey number retired. I think that um, I was blessed with, with a lot of ability. Um, Fortunate enough, I think, at a very early age to play uh, or be coached uh, by some coaches who, who learned me things that big guys weren't doing back then. Like I could dribble the ball, I could handle the ball, and, and then back, back then it wasn't too many forwards who could bring the ball up court. Uh, let's say if we were in a, uh, in a pressing situation where another team was pressing us, but we could flip-flop flip -flop our guards and have our forwards bring the ball up the court. Bob Nedelicki, 6'9", 225, out of Drake University, played eight seasons for the ABA Pacers. He was a big contributor for the team, averaging 15 and a half points a game, for not only his regular season career, but for the playoffs as well. Neto, as he was known, had a great touch on a sweeping hook shot. I started out here my first year I was a center. We didn't really have a, uh, a dominant center here, and I played center in college, so I played center my first year. And then the, the biggest move I think they made probably in the, in the years where they got Mel the next year. So Mel moved to center, and I moved to power forward, and of course Roger was the other forward, Freddie, and uh, Billy, you know, Billy wasn't even there for a couple of years, but uh, 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 that's the role I played in throughout my career. And then I, I, at uh, Dallas, I played center again, because they didn't have a center down there and then when I came back here I continued it forward. I played either starting or backup role with it forward with George. Freddie Lewis, six foot, out of Arizona State, played eight years with the ABA Pacers. Prior to coming to Indiana, he played with the Cincinnati Royals of the NBA, where he learned a lot from Oscar Robertson. Lewis was the Pacer captain. Fritz, as he was known, averaged 16 points a game and more than 18 points during his playoff tour. <laughs> <laughs> 